Hello, I'm Andy Agafangelo. I'm carrying out this video interview of Andy Keats in my capacity as chair of the Secretariat Committee to the All-Party Parliamentary Group on Personal Banking and Fairer Financial Services. I am also, however, the founder of the Transparency Task Force, which provides the Secretariat to the All-Party Parliamentary Group. Andy, thank you very much indeed for agreeing to have this conversation with me. As you know, the conversation is being video recorded. Uh, the video recording will be put onto the APPG's website and will raise awareness of it through social media and so on. You're carrying out this conversation with me on the basis that you have already provided a written submission to the All Party Parliamentary Group in its call for evidence about the Financial Conduct Authority. Could I invite you, please, first of all, Andy, just to Tell us about yourself and outline just briefly to begin with how you came to interact with the FCA. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Um, my name is Andy Keats, as you rightly said, and um, I'm the CEO of SME Alliance. Um, and uh, we're a lobbying group that's been around since 2014. We deal mainly with um, uh, people who've got serious banking complaints. And um, I and before 2014, uh, we were sort of doing this in an ad hoc way as not uh, not as the SME Alliance, but um, individually. So um, in terms of the FCA, um, we, I became aware through talking to complainants and receiving their files that there were a number of discrepancies, and I use that word at the moment, discrepancies, um, coming through on their customer files, which they, they reported to me weren't correct. Um, and there were various um, incidents and events that were reported to me that I thought this, this is just bad. Um, bad behaviour, bad conduct and worse, it, it's probably criminal. So I decided that I was going to have a look into this and I, I collected in the end um, so much information on it, I decided to put it together into a series of presentations. And then we contacted the Financial Conduct Authority to see whether they'd be interested. Well, I didn't imagine for a minute they wouldn't be interested in looking at ways in which this particular bank, RBS, and we concentrated on one bank in the end, um, and put together files which were examples of eight different ways in which quite clear that RBS was manipulating and, and changing customers' central files um, to suit itself. And uh, we arranged a meeting for an hour with um, the head of banking supervision, Karina McPeak, um, in September 2015. That's the background. Thank you very much, Andy. So in your written submission, you've got a record of uh, some of the uh, interactions you've had. Uh, how would you like to uh, share those during the course of this video interview? OK, so I've got a transcript um, written up that um, I've presented to the APPG uh, via, the, uh, via the form. Um, also got a recording, a video recording that I took at the time. It was covertly taken, but it was in order to um, preserve the event and make sure that, um, it, that it's accurately recorded um, and that no one could ever say that um, it didn't happen or that didn't happen. Uh, I've got the video on the screen and I can share um, moments of it with you or the complete thing, anything you want. Okay, Andy, thank you very much indeed for sharing that. And uh, you've also provided in your written submission a transcript uh, which individuals can, if they want to, download from the APPG's website. I also understand that you've got some video evidence that you're keen to share as well. Please tell us about that, Andy. Thank you. Okay, so the video evidence um, I, I covertly recorded of the meeting to make sure that, uh, with the FCA, to make sure that it was recorded properly and accurately and that. Um, Anybody challenged what was said later on, it couldn't be challenged because there's video evidence. 
um, it's something I do quite often <laughs> just to uh, um, preserve everything properly um, in the best way you can. Um, in terms of uh, the video, it's, it's about 10 minutes long and probably the sound is quite soft. So it would be a good idea if someone wants to listen to the video and watch it through, they do actually um, download the transcript and then word for word, they'll be able to see and hear and that will um, that will enable them to um, get a, a flavour of what what is going on. You can actually hear it, but it's soft. So you have to concentrate a bit. So if I share the screen now. Yeah. And, and just before you press play on that, uh, Andy, could you just um, explain, uh, give everybody a little bit of context in terms of who was at the meeting, what were the expectations of the meeting, and then um, uh, give us a bit of a feel for what's going to happen. And then okay, I'll do that then. Press play. Thank you. Um, okay, well, before, before I share the screen, um, I should tell you that this uh, this meeting took place in, uh, in uh, on the 23rd of uh, September 2015. And the meeting was with the um, FCA's um, head of banking supervision at the time, Karina McPeak, and um, she was also accompanied by Claire Bollingford, who was um, sort of taking notes and, uh, and assisting at the time. Um, the meeting was booked for an hour, but uh, as you will see um, and hear, uh, it, immediately um, Karina was, was late claiming that she um, to another meeting and that she didn't have a lot of time. And um, files that we showed them, uh, I was with Nikki Turner, by the way, um, who was the um, uh, CEO of SME Lights at the time and now the chairman or chair, chairperson, I should say. Um, at the time, we believed quite rightly that the FCA would be horrified by the uh, visual representations we'd put together and they would take the files away and promise that they would start to investigate the way that RBS was keeping its files and what it was doing. Um, and we had, as I said, we had eight different um, presentations, but they were all um, they just identified different ways which the bank is manipulating its customer files. And as you will hear, the meeting didn't go according to plan at all. And the FCA very robustly refers us not just to the police and the information commissioner's office, but claims that it's got no, no means and no power from, a, from parliament. It's not empowered from parliament um, to investigate the manipulation of uh, customer files. So in other words, Okay, <laughs> frankly, uh, nonsense, but uh, you, you'll see it now. So I'll share the screen and start from the beginning of the transcript. Your journey, um, and thank you for making that journey worthwhile. I just want to, if you don't mind, rather than you've been very clear, and I think I've played back to you my well, own. That's fine. Journey. If you've got five minutes, so I can show you I, visually. I don't think you need to show me because I'm very clear about what you said or the issue. If I can maybe, and, and I played back to you, 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 you said that, that I, 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 I got it. What I would like to do, if I may, is explain to you what I think an initial response would be appropriate for, for you out of this, this meeting. Because I don't want you to go away feeling that, you know, thank you, I've seen it when I walk out, and it's there when I walk out. Um, on the first point, about um, RBS um, putting evidence into court, uh, which is um, misleading uh, to the point of uh, being uh, perjury. I'm going to leave you with a with um, a process uh, with a um, with I a presentation. Would, so. I would um, strongly recommend that you take that to the police because that is a criminal matter. On the question about RBS and the complaint handling. That is something we're very interested in. We're very interested in how every firm handles complaints. It's vital that complaints handling uh, 
has is dealt with with integrity, and you are calling into question quite understandably oh, yeah. the integrity of their complaint handling. It doesn't stop there either. <laughs> so, um, thank you for bringing that to to our attention, and we will certainly take that away, um, and we will take that into account with how we are dealing at present on a daily basis uh, with RBS. The third point about the um, subject access request, I don't know where the appropriate place is to consider that. And I'm I think it would be the so the information commissioner, I believe is the We've, we, we've taken it. We've spoken to the information commissioner, um, who at the moment doesn't want to meet with us. Is it sort of saying they do, but they're making it difficult to meet? Um, we've made a complaint to the RBS um, czar team, and um, we're waiting for that to come back. Um, the RBS czar team and um, Ross McEwen's office and um, Will Luca, uh, the head of litigation for RBS, um, and um, the head, um, one of their senior complaints managers, are all denying everything, even though I've sent them evidence of it. So that does sound as if you need to persevere then with the information commissioner. So the information commissioner, let me just tell you, says. Although we can recommend things to the bank, we can't enforce anything, and therefore, if you don't like it, you'll have to take them to court. Which is kind of a bizarre situation. I'm afraid I'm, I really can't. I, I, I can't comment. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not, you know, we're, we're, we're coming here, although this is a particular situation, we're not here for the particular situation. We're here to show that this is so serious that the bank relies on the integrity of the central file. Now if that has not got any integrity and I'm convinced it hasn't because of, because of my investigations, I'm convinced that they do whatever they like with it in whatever way they, they feel necessary, that everything falls down because it means that every subject access request is questionable, your central file is questionable, what they say in court is questionable and it, it, at the very least you just can't rely on it so where are we because this is the one thing that they say that, um, John Collins the head of, head, head, he says the truth will out because the central file that's where it all is so it isn't <laughs> completely understand where you're coming from um, this is when, you, when it the question of the integrity of evidence and tampering with evidence, which I think the allegations yes, are yes, yeah, definitely. And that has to be taken to uh, the police. And well, so, so I'm afraid you know that that is the right channel, and the SAR that has to be taken to the information commissioner. I can understand your frustration, but we are not empowered by Parliament to take forward either of those two. Those the right channels for you are the justice system through the, the police and the information commissioner for the show. We will absolutely take on uh, what you have said about the complaint handling. It is of concern what you've said to okay, us. Okay, well then, that's a good starting point. Take that but but I thought so actually is that, there that would have been in this um, is there anything tampering with evidence and would have thought. It's a criminal matter oh. and we, are, we do not have the power from Parliament to deal with criminal matters. Well, it may not be criminal. So, I would like, if you don't mind, for you to take that forward with the police, um, and we will certainly take on the uh, complaints handling uh, issue that you've raised, and thank you very much indeed for bringing that to our attention. It is really important to us that we have this sort of information, because it does help us understand where should we be diverting our resources to make sure that we are focusing on the right areas 
Well, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to leave you with this pre- I'm going to leave you with this presentation, which you may need to speak to me about. But this presentation um, was something that I I gave to the um, International Economic Crime Symposium last week at Cambridge so University. Um, um, so it's out in the open, and also um, RBS has got that as well. I sent it to them. To let you know, and you probably won't like what I'm about to say, but I do need to be completely transparent with you. When we get intelligence from people, you don't tell us what you're going to do. We cannot tell you what we're going to do with it. Because if we tell even the sources of our intelligence what we're going to do with it, there are people who are then able to use that as intelligence in a way which could then undermine our ability to act. So in the same way as I have to write, and to your point at the start of this meeting, I have to write to MPs and say thank you, but I'm not <coughs> with it. Because you have to be able to operate, and you'll understand this being formed policemen. You can't start telling people what you're doing in terms of acting on intelligence you've been no. given. No, well, we're not, we're not expecting that. We're, but but, what, but what, we are ex- ma- what we, we are expecting is... So yeah. Thank you very much, but I did, I did want to be very open with you because I'd hate you to have an expectation which, you know, isn't... Would you be averse? I know, it, I know it's our money and everything else coming back, but I still think, even with, the, even with that, that you would be shocked beyond measure if you actually see, just, you don't have to read, you just have to see visually what we've got. So would you be averse to having another meeting for an hour Excuse where... You? With where respect, we can actually do respect, that. Andy, I, I don't think that is going to um, add very much to our own understanding of the, the seriousness of the allegations we've made. We will take away this, and we are treating that seriously, and we will treat it seriously. Um, the integrity of evidence going into court, you have to take that forward with the police. And with the SARS Which police force would you recommend? I don't know, um, but I would have thought you might be in a better position than I. Well, that's the point, and you the see. The police, will, the police will say, I know what they'll say because the, because we deal with them all the time, they'll say, well, this isn't a matter for us, this is clearly a matter for the regulatory authority because it's, to do, with, it's to do with tampering with the central file. So it's not an individual thing, this is, a, this is something they need to look into. A court case, where, where oh yes, have no. led evidence, then that is a of course, evidence. but but that's not really mm-hmm. what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is that you asked, was it was this particular thing used in court? Yes, it was. But the point is that if it happens once, or it can happen once, and we we say, look, this is what's changed from here to there, and that was used in court, then of course it can happen in other times, which we, which I would expect you guys to be looking so into. We. We, to stop under- it we understand what you're saying, but I'm afraid what you're talking about here is outside of our jurisdiction. This is a criminal matter that you're talking about, something going into court. Um, so, thank you very much for coming along. I really do not think going through these in detail is going to ha- take our understanding any further beyond what has already been helpful. So, thank you very much, Andy. I'm afraid. We have run out of time. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Andy, for um, sharing that um, evidence. And uh, if you wish now to uh, (coughs) return to where you got to in your written submission and just pick up from there and uh, continue with, uh, with your evidence. Thank you, Andy. Uh, yes, indeed. Well, uh, the point the point about this it, it's been sitting around for for some years now since 2015, and um, at one point um, this was going to be on news at ten, um, and then Bank's lawyers got involved, and um, the BBC lost lost their battle and didn't. Um, but, this was um, this was me having put together spent a great deal of time evidencing 
as a former police officer, evidencing what, what I could clearly see is something that's really serious within the bank. And I'm talking to the head, not, not, to, not to the tail, but I'm talking to the head of banking supervision, who you can get there, um, and you can see on the transcript, is clearly avoiding anything to do with this. And they, she's making, it's Karina McTeague there, is making huge assumptions about, oh, this is criminal. Well, how do you know it's criminal until you've looked at it? Nobody can say that something is criminal until someone's been, uh, until, uh, for example, a criminal barrister has decided that, um, there's a charge that can be laid against someone and then it would have to go to courts and then either a magistrate or a, or a jury would have to uh, convict someone of doing something criminal. Until then, it's not a crime. And um, I think that's um, that's exemplified and uh, and identified in the Lloyd's H. Boss Reading saga, where Lloyd's clearly knew what was going on from from 2008 or 2007 even, um, and they were very aware of what was going on. But they announced after the trial, after the people had been convicted, this was the first time they knew it was a crime. Well, of course, because until they're convicted, could have all been found not guilty, in which case Lloyds would have said, well, we told you it wasn't a crime. See what I mean? So this thing about, oh, it's a crime, it's a crime. It's no, nothing's a crime until, you, until it's investigated properly and something's done about it, someone is convicted of it. Until that time, it's just... Um, something that is subject to an investigation that um, could be a regulatory breach, it might not be a regulatory breach, somebody might say, oh no, that's perfectly okay, you can manipulate files, you can make up, um, I mean the files that I provided for the, for the FCA, we actually managed to do a, um, a, a three hour presentation um, two months later in, in November, um, of 2015, where at the end of the presentation, the FCA said, oh, this is really serious. Can we take it to the police? Well, part of my, uh, we said, yes, yes, you can. We've got the authority from everyone to take it to the police. Yes, you can. As long as you look at it yourself, we don't mind what you do. Um, and um, the, what they actually did was they renamed um, case studies, renamed it complaints. Um, so each one was now a, a single complaint. And they passed it all over to Ross McEwen at RBS. And 10 days later, on the 22nd of November, I think, he was on um, LBC radio saying, um, I've got it here actually, he said, he said on, the, on the LBC radio, um, no one, no one has proved these things. We've looked through these files, had eight of them across the desk, and I'm sorry, they're just not true. Um, then he says, you show me where, where it's gone wrong and show me what difference it would have made to the actual case that was held and the outcome of that. That's the piece, he says. That's his favorite saying, that's the piece. Um, he says there are a number of people having to go out the bank constantly. Well, he was aiming this, it was all aimed at me because um, Ian Fraser says to him um, in the question, um, says, um, what, what does he, uh, he says, um, this, um, this, these were documented at the Cambridge Symposium on Financial Crimes in September, a guy called Andy Keats, and they've also been documented in the Times and various other internet and national newspapers. And the allegations are basically that RBS is on a kind of industrial scale, falsifying core files on SME customers. Well, when you when you consider that is the allegation, if you like, it's out there in the public, and the FCA are are literally wipe, washing their hands of it, and then make matters worse. The FCA say that not empowered, not empowered by Parliament. We know that's just not right. <laughs> Andy, I'm telling you that they are empowered by Parliament. 
do whatever they like. They've got all sorts of powers. And um, the, the idea, the very idea that you could say, well, no, this, this, is, so, um, this is so bad, this, is, this behavior is so egregious that we can't look at it. And therefore, everyone carries on as normal. It's frankly outrageous. Um, I could go on from there, actually. I think what, it, what I've said, what I said to the presentation, um, when, I, when I made the three hour presentation, I said it's as though the, um, if, you take, if you take a loan document and you say um, that uh, a customer forgot, the bank forgot to get the customer to sign a loan document. So that's a regulatory breach, you know, it's a, it's a breach of protocol, the customer has to sign the loan document. So I say, um, okay, well, what happens then? And of course, what happens then is that there's an investigation and, um, the, and the manager gets a rap over the knuckles for forgetting to get the customer to sign the document, etc. What is happening here is the FCA is saying, ah, yes, but if the manager realised that the customer hadn't signed, uh, and sign the document and then copied his signature from some other document they had and pasted it into the customer into the uh, loan document if he did that that's something we can't look at at all that's something that that's a crime you need to go to the police with that crime we don't want to know that the manager can carry on um, he can carry on doing exactly as he pleases the, his manager can carry on nobody's interested in this at all apart from the police well, it doesn't make sense, does it? <laughs> Just doesn't make sense. And um, and you can see that here she is strongly recommending that you take that to the police because it's a criminal matter. You know, um, uh, she's then saying we should go to the information commissioner's office. And the head of the FCA says that she doesn't know where to take. Um, Allegations that subject access requests are being uh, manipulated. She didn't know where to take it apparently, and she had to have a psychic, um, Ed Wingford, uh, reminder that there was an information commissioner's office, <laughs> and if the FCA have never heard of it, I mean, just defies belief. And then, of course, we get to the the pivotal points that um, where she says. You know, not once but twice. We are not empowered by Parliament to take either of these, either, sorry, to take forward either of those two. The right channels are for you, for you, are the justice system through the police and the information commissioner for the subject access request. Um, and then she, she backs that up again by saying it's a criminal matter and we do not have the power from Parliament to deal with criminal matters. Well, and the between you and me, and hopefully anyone that watches this, I'd say that this is what's been going on for years. We all know that the FCA is just ignoring it's the most serious of allegations, and it's not interested in the slightest. She does keep saying, oh, we are interested in how they handle their complaints. And it defies belief. And then, of course, we get to the final bit. I'm just down my screen here he says um um he says uh, uh she doesn't need to see the presentations because um uh, it's not going to add very much to our own understanding of the seriousness of the allegations you've made um and he says you have to take this forward with the police again and i say which police force would you recommend and she says no I don't know. I would have thought you might be a better person in a better position than I understand what force to take it to because I'm a, I'm a police officer. Just the head, head of banking supervision. It's not some other department, it's the head of banking supervision. And if you can't rely on FCA to do something simple like that or even shocked, that's, I mean, I wanted her to say, my God, what's going on? She didn't. She just spent the whole time pushing, pushing away. I don't need to see that. We don't need to see that. You go over there. You go over there. Nothing to do with us. We're not empowered. 
Obviously, that's wrong. Andy, thank you very much. Is there anything else in relation to that first question that you would like to talk about before I go on to the next question, which is about um, what you believe was supposed to happen um, and what actually happened? Anything else on that first question, Andy? No, I'm fine. Thank you very much indeed. I would encourage anybody watching this to read the written transcript provided, which will also be available on the APPG's website just beneath uh, Andy Keats's uh, video. So the next question, Andy, is this. Uh, what was supposed to happen as you understood it and what actually happened? Well, I didn't know what was supposed to happen. But as, a, um, as we were speaking to the head of banking supervision, I expected that they would undertake an investigation. Um, we, we knew that they may um, sort of say, well, we'll do an investigation, but you're, we're not going to tell you what it is or how it works. Um, and nevertheless say something. Uh, or um, I also expected them to interview me further about what other information I've got and probably um, treat us as whistleblowers. Um, in, in, form that we were coming to them and to, to take it seriously and it's quite clear that they didn't they didn't do any of those things um, and they certainly didn't take it seriously they didn't want to know and she um, I would have thought that any other meeting that she had been in or had to go to um, which is what made the meeting very very short was um, secondary to what I was presenting to her um, Yet nothing. So, in terms of what should have happened, definitely. Anyway, I mean, an investigation might have covered, might have uncovered nothing. What I certainly wouldn't expect them to do, which was what they did eventually, would hand all the files over to the to the suspect, if you like, in this case, and just say, "Here, here you go. Here's what we've got, and these are all complaints." Unbelievable. And um, I. I Funnily enough, what came back in a subject access request with with another, with a, not me, but to another customer, um, the result of this meeting and the and the FCA note turned up in their subject access request because their name was mentioned. And there they all are: complaint number one, complaint number two, complaint number three, and they weren't. They were case studies, specifically case studies. And we said we're whistleblowers, not not you know. In complaints, can you please look at complaints, individual complaints? Not at all. Um, this is an in well, I think you know, the, the answer to everything, um, and the is uh, the customer data, the central data. This is where this is where it's at. And if we could if we could sort out the central data and make sure it was painted in any way, I think most of these historic complaints would go. Most of the complaints coming up would go um, because um, at the moment there it appears that the banks, not just RBS, but RBS is what I investigated here, it appears they got carte blanche to just change things. If they don't like it, change it. Thank you very much, Andy. And I'm going to move on to the, uh, the next question. Uh, what have been the consequences to you, your business, if appropriate, uh, your family, uh, as a result of what's happened? Yep. Yeah, okay. Well, um, the business um, on, the, on the business issue uh, that had to close because of um, because of what um, RBS did, and um, we've uncovered now uh, through through a series of closures that um, they were falsifying customer records in the background um, and telling all sorts of lies about my business, me personally, um, about uh, the, uh, the risk we allegedly caused to the bank, false calculations, uh, false, um, uh, false representations of um, various rules they were quoting liberally from. And then when you look at the rule, it doesn't say that at all. <laughs> um, and um, they, 
and they just decided that that's what they were going to do and they did and um they retained all all of my money uh, from, from business sales um and on uh, 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 some alleged risk and um frankly and and then at the end of the day we received um or not a day before the day before we we had to close because we didn't have any money because they were keeping all of our money as it came in all of our sales revenue we weren't allowed to um we weren't allowed to access um their solicitors sent um sent an email to our solicitors saying look we will release enough money to pay um, mr keats's staff um my money <laughs> but they said they would release enough money to do that provided we didn't we, we agreed to sign it with or he provided agreed not to pursue the bank with any claims against it <laughs> so um, i mean for the sake so that was that in terms of my personal life they you know they they've um uh they've after a nine-year battle they managed to uh remove our house by repossession um it, it's now tran transpired that uh, again central files have been manipulated my central files on my personal mortgage manipulated terribly uh, false mortgage statements um completely forged mortgage statements um uh what else uh, false uh, over a thousand changes to a transcript of a complaints call i made <laughs> um over a thousand material changes um They've manipulated my emails, um, uh, and I'll show you some of that at some point. They've manipulated my emails where they take a take a paragraph and take some words out of the middle of it and get rid of the rest of the paragraph and make these words into a sentence. Uh, they they uh, replace commas with full stops. Um, they take out the beginning of a sentence to leave the end, or the end of a sentence to leave the beginning remove the context do all sorts of things they remove complaints so that so that there were no complaints going through um and in what at one point they point up two sentences with by removing 453 words i think in between them so you've got you've got a sentence and then 453 words missing and then the beginning of another sentence which seems to follow on from the first sentence um that's what happened there um <laughs> they've done you name it they've done it i've got three letters all this all reporting to be on the same day the same letter and they've all got completely different figures in them completely different you think this can't be this cannot be so but it is um it's all there in spades and we lost our house and um through court and i'm having that investigated at this very moment in time i've got a i've got um and now i've put it all together properly uh, i've got a meeting with uh, criminal lawyers next week to start the process of, of investigating that so that's what's happened to me i've um got broad shoulders and i know it happens to lots of people the point is it shouldn't it shouldn't happen to anyone i think I think funnily enough you know ross McEwen, when he was when he was saying what he was saying off the cuff yeah, his radio interview and i've got if anybody wants it i've got the recording of this as well but he says he says something that's really interesting because he says you show me where it's gone wrong and show me what difference it would have made to the actual case that was held and the outcome of that now what he's essentially saying is he's literally to me he's saying look we can do what we like with these central files and provided it doesn't make a difference you know, we can still do what we like i mean he's kind of saying if you get it to court and it makes a difference then fair enough if you don't get it to court so what which is a very very strange way for a ceo of a bank to um behave and he it's difficult to understand what he could mean other than that because he just wants to see what well so what what difference it make thank you andy and just to be clear before we move on to the next question um 
how much of what you are stating today can you back up with hard evidence? All of it. Okay. But say anything that I can't back up with hard evidence. Thank you. I'll move on to the next question. Uh, what could the FCA have done that might have protected you from harm? Very simply, if they, if they, if they, I wasn't asking them to protect me from harm. You know, I have to say that I, I was just saying to them that they should investigate the integrity of the bank's RBSs and NatWest central files, the files they hold on their customers. They need to, they need to investigate the integrity of it. If they'd done that, um, I'd still be in my house. Uh, I would definitely still be in my house. Um, it would have been too late for the business, but um, I would have received serious compensation for the loss of the business. Um, and everything would have been unwound. Because if you correct files, none of this could have happened. None of it. Um, that I've seen, uh, obviously, Andy, I think you know that, uh, you know, I look at serious banking complaints and I've seen so many that would just be um, corrected and resolved properly if the file would correct it. Once the file is corrected, even, even something like, simple like, um, uh, a transcript the the conversation between uh, the bank and the business owner um, at the meeting never took place. What is that thing on a central file? There it is, and that's used in um, in a particular uh, IRHP review. That was used to get the bank off and pay nothing to the the customer in there were all the questions that they should have asked him but didn't because in the customer was in portugal improve it it wasn't a meeting with the bank he was in portugal i've seen other, other meetings where people um these are minutes of meetings that just don't take place they've never taken place they make them up that's just a simple simple thing you know straightforward isn't it Thank you. And I'm going to move on to the next question, Andy. Uh, to your knowledge, what did the FCA do about your case? They packaged it up. They renamed everything. From, uh, they renamed each of the eight presentations from being a case study to being a complaint. And they handed it all over to RBS. And the evidence for that is Ross McEwen saying, I've seen eight of them across my desk. Well, and couldn't in any other thing anything else than, than my presentation because it is preempted by um, Ian Fraser, the, um, the journalist, saying to Ross, "You know, what do you think about these very serious allegations by by a guy called Andy Key?" So there's no mistaking it. I'm not I'm not sort of two, two unconnected things together to make one. Uh, that's what the bank does, not me. Thank you. And uh, next question, Andy. Uh, what would you say about the FCA's effectiveness and timeliness in taking action to protect other business owners from this kind of harm? Well, I think you heard it <laughs> on, the, on the video. And um, if you look at the uh, transcript, you will see that they do nothing protect the business whatsoever they do everything absolutely everything to protect the bank um, and knowing that, I mean they're saying it themselves Andy you know I didn't I, I actually say in the in the transcript you get or the video you hear me say well it may not be criminal <laughs> they they themselves say this is criminal and on that basis we don't want to know we don't want to do anything about it and then they say that we're not empowered by parliament so if parliament empowered us to maybe we might so it's shocking beyond measure and the next question andy 
How helpful has the FCA been to you and others affected in securing redress from the financial institutions that have caused harm? Interesting you say that because um, since then, um, the FCA has actually prevented me from ever contacting them. Um, I have to frame that in the in the correct way. What I mean is, when if I phone the FCA and they say, "Oh yes, we, we, what would you like?" You know, blah blah blah. What's your name? If I give my name, they say, "Oh, you can't talk to us. We can't talk to you. Um, you need to contact the um, executive office." And I say, "Okay then." Uh, put me through to them. Oh, no, no, can only be done in writing. And that's the end of the call every time. And if I give a different name or try to say that, you know, forget my surname or something, um, they, when they learn my telephone number, that also comes up with the same response. Oh, no, you're Mr. Keats, right? We're not going to talk to you. Now, they are. Clearly, um, they don't want to know about me, and and I've um, and I and I phoned them quite regularly, well, not, not anymore quite regularly, but I did um, for help on um, finding things in the, in their rules and regulations um, on behalf of other people. Simple general inquiries, and they won't they won't talk to me. I asked once where where I could find the list of Banking services. They wouldn't tell me. They said, no, it's got to be done through the executive office. Thank you. So, in other words, they do nothing to help me. They, they actively um, act against me. Um, and as far as I can tell, I can't, I can't ever remember anyone saying they did uh, they had a good experience with the FCA. And uh, our next question for you, Andy, how effectively did the FCA act to prevent uh, them, uh, the institutions that have caused harm from carrying on uh, causing harm? Well, they haven't. They haven't. I mean, this is a particular thing about manipulation and falsification of customer files. Um, it's, a, it's a global problem and um, it's very widely known that it happens or alleged that it happens and uh, they've done Zero. Zero. Absolutely zero. And next question. What are your thoughts on any shortcomings at the FCA? Well, I think um, one of the things that has to happen with the FCA is that they cannot be both the consumer champion and the bank's champion. They can't be looking after the markets and looking after the consumers. It just it's impossible. That's like me trying to look after the burglar as well as the as well as the the victim. You know, trying to kind of draw a line in between them somehow. It's nonsense. You know, the someone has to be the, the people's champion, the customer's champion, and stand up against the bank champion, if you like, or the market champion, and let them put heads. And then we and then we should have some sort of um, something that moves along quite nicely, rather than which is upright, rather than being tilted in the favour of the banks all the time. Because the customer is always going to lose, because the, the bank is king and the and money is king, and the financial services that the UK offers is is king. So the customer is going to lose in that scenario. Uh, next question, Andy. Uh, what are your thoughts on whether the FCA lacks the powers that it needs, or conversely, that it doesn't make good use of the powers that it already has? To be fair, I, 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 I've never really studied powers that the FCA has. Um, but I can't imagine that they don't have um, sufficient powers to do whatever they want. I mean, if they're, they're going to supervise a bank or um, take away a banking license or have the powers to do all these different things, then they must get those powers from somewhere. So they must be there and FISMA gives some powers, presumably. And, and they haven't got the power to do something in particular, like this nonsense here about we don't have the power to investigate um, 
crime. Um, um, in actual fact, no one's asking them to investigate crime. You don't have to investigate a crime to investigate a problem. You can do it from the bottom up. In other words, it, it, however your however your complaints process is is, um, is managed, you can um, investigate a complaint within that, or a, a, or an event, or um, or an allegation within that within that um, scope. If you think um, having investigated within that scope, you um, it's not sufficient, and you've taken the You've taken the action that you've taken, but um, um, I think actually this needs to also be reported um, higher to a different authority. And you can do that, and the different authority might come in, and um, I mean, the, the FCA might find, find the banks for doing something, or um, or um, you know at least ensure that um, something doesn't happen in the future then go and report them to the police and say, well, look, this is what we've uncovered. And uh, we, we can see that there are various people involved in this, this one, this one, and this one. And then we think that uh, potentially the crime committed here, would you like to investigate? You could do it like that. That's how they want to do it. Because I, I mean, no one, no one can suddenly become a criminal investigator, but that's not, not what's being asked of them. Uh, thank you. Uh, next question. In general terms, what? How would you describe what it's been like dealing with the FCA? In one word, hopeless. Okay, we'll move on. Uh, question number sixteen. Uh, what's your perception of the culture of the FCA? What, what do you think about its culture? Well, I've, uh, I've only met the very top. Um, the culture in the very top is to um, it's not. It, it doesn't embrace you as a customer or a whistleblower, it does the opposite. I always get the feeling whenever I've, I've um, well, on the two main occasions when I've dealt with them, um, you get the impression that you're the imposter, um, that, that, that what you're doing is upsetting the apple cart, which shouldn't be the, shouldn't be the case, obviously. Uh, what do you think about the possibility of conflicts of interest issues at the FCA? Well, the revolving doors, and I mean, it's crazy. I, I, I think I said in my um, my submission to the um, PPG that, uh, as a former police officer, I could never ever serve on a jury. Sorry, I've got a lot of noise going on there. Um, can never ever serve on a jury because that's that's the end of it. You can't do it. Um, because you, I would be conflicted, or so they say. Um, similarly, I, I just do not understand how banks can be seconded into FCA. Um, the FCA can be seconded into the banks, and they all have a jolly time together. And um, then P, bank staff go and work for the FCA, FCA staff go and work for the banks. And they've, they've been investigating. Um, I mean, there's a recent one, isn't there, with who's head of, or certainly one of the top of the IRHP um, review, has gone to work for RBS. I don't see how that can happen. I, you know, it should be stopped. I, I don't think it should even be possible for um, people to say, well, there should be a five year gap or a three year gap or whatever. I don't think it should happen. It's just wrong. If you could change three things about the FCA, uh, what would they be? <laughs> oh, yeah, me. Um, I can tell I haven't been pre-warned about these questions. Three things about the FCA. I, th I think they have to be one or the other, the people's champion or um, or the bank champion, yeah, one or the other. Um, and they need to, uh, that's one. Um, they need to engage properly. They can't do that until they've done number one. So, you know, whichever side of the fence they're on, they need to engage properly. But um, and three, I think, I don't know, three, <laughs> I don't know where to start. I think they just, I, it's not fit for purpose. 
I understand. I'm going to just as a, to assist here. I'm going to read out the responses you provided in your written submission. So just to repeat the question, then I'll read out your responses. The question was, if you could change three things about the FCA, what would they be? And in your submission, which everyone can download if they wish to, you say, ensure the regulation of banks and financial institutions has the teeth and appetite to deal with bad behaviour. Uh, regulate all banking products, services and conduct. And thirdly, prevent FCA and bank personnel working for the opposites when they leave their employment for at least five years or longer, uh, brackets, no revolving door. A police officer cannot be a juror. The same should apply for a banker and a regulator. And the next question, Andy, uh, what positives are there about the FCA that you would like to comment on? I haven't got any. Um, in my, my experience, I just do not have any. Do you believe that there should be spot checks by the FCA on regulated and or unregulated entities, perhaps similar to the spot checks by VAT inspectors? Yes. Thank you. I also believe there should be spot checks on the FCA. And uh, we're coming towards the end here now, Andy. Uh, the FCA is undertaking a transformation project. Uh, do you have any comments to make about that? Uh, not without really knowing what what on the earth they're talking about. Um, I think I think the, the recent IRHP review by um, Jonathan Swift is um, a really good example of their transformation. <laughs> I mean, it's non-existent, is it? They made a made a decision back in 2012, 13, whenever it was. Um, Jonathan Swift clearly says that that was wrong. Um, then they, the same day that his report comes out, they say, well, we're not doing anything about it. We'll, we'll, we may do better in the future. Um, let's carry on. Well, there's no way to run. That's <laughs> laughable, isn't it? Uh, thank you. And again, what I'm going to do just to assist Andy is I'm going to read out the answer you gave to that question in your submission. So I'll, I'll, I'll repeat. Is it different? <laughs> no, you're, you're adding. You're adding to what you've already provided. And the good, the good thing is that people can read your submission and listen and watch to what you're saying now. But I'm just going to read out the question and provide your answer to. The question was: the FCA is undertaking a transformation project. Do you have any comments to make about that? And your answer was: uh, the FCA must be overseen by an independent body until it proves that it, it is effective in dealing with banks and financial institutions. Alternatively, scrap the FCA and start again with a proper representation for bank and financial institution customers, be they business or private. And your final point on this matter is regulate all banking products, services and conduct. And the very final question for you, Andy, is are there any other comments that you would like to make? I can think of many, but I'm not going to. I think I think I've said enough and not not happy with the with the regulator. And if anybody said oh, I go to the regulator, I'd just say I wouldn't bother. Andy Keats, uh, Chief Executive of the SME Alliance, thank you very much indeed for providing, first of all, your written submission that people can download from the APPG's website and also this video interview with me today. Andy, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Hey, no problem. Nice to be here. Thanks.